edition. It is Wednesday. I am Philip DeFranco, and this is me talking about newsy type stuff and things that matter to me today. Nation, the first thing I want to talk about today is GQ magazine made an article called The Least Influential People of 2012. They describe the article as, quote, only GQ possesses the iron testicles to count down the 25 least significant men and women of 2012. A collection of people so uninspiring that we should round them all up and stick them on an iceberg. Please note that these folks are ranked in no particular order because all zeros are created equal. That being said, number one was Mr. Mitt Romney, which right off the bat makes me question this entire article. Does the author, do the collaborators on this project know what the word influential means? And for the sake of not paraphrasing, dictionary.com defines influential when a noun as person who exerts or can exert strong influence. But what, my friends, is influence? Well, it's defined as the capacity or power of persons or things to be a compelling force on or produce effects on the actions, behavior, opinions, etc. of others. And so while I do admit Mitt Romney kind of weirded me out, I didn't really dig him. I was kind of into some of his policies, but I didn't feel like he had anything real. He made it very apparent to America that like 46% of Americans are not happy with Barack Obama. Then the list continues. Amanda Bynes, Madonna, Gautier, George Zimmerman. The list goes on and on, but it does it, it's a list that does not make sense. It is a, it's a hack job. A way to attack 25 people that I guess whoever wrote this or the collection of people did not like. It's plainly put unintelligible view baits. Which, hey, I am a YouTuber. I can respect that, but it's just stupid. Failures and scandals do not make people not influential. Once again, we talked about Mitt Romney. And you have George Zimmerman, who, yes, I believe should go to jail, but he brought up a very important topic of gun laws. Stand your ground, racism in America, it's a, it's a big human interest story. Even the author or authors of this article, even though you look at this and go, oh, those guys are stupid, you know, failures. It could be argued that you are being influential because you're like, oh man, look at these people being judgmental. Maybe I shouldn't be so judgmental. But it could be argued, oh, it is a failure because it's not stopping me from judging people because I'm judging you. Then I have something I have to share and that is, uh, you know how it would be really cool if like when you bought a Transformers toy, like it actually transformed? Well, this Japanese robotics research collective called Bravo Robotics made this. It's a prototype, it's 1 12th scale, it's operated by a modified PS3 controller, it has a missile launcher, it connects to your iPad with a video camera. A money, take it. Now, I don't need it, I need this. To which you might respond, Phil, you could easily spend that money on something better, you could help the world, yes, but if I spend my money on this, I can make awesome YouTube videos terrifying my tiny little dogs. And when you really break it down, wouldn't the world be a little better with a video of a tiny Yorkie fighting a robot? The answer is an unquestionable yes. Main point, I want it. Give it to me, please. In international news, the powder keg that is Egypt may be set to go off again. Here you can see as many as 200,000 Egyptians assembled in Cairo's Tahrir Square, as well as other major cities across the country to protest Islamist President Mohamed Morsi and his self-issued edict that grants him sweeping powers, including what his critics say is immunity of his office and his Muslim brother controlled assembly from judicial oversight. Since this has happened, a 15-year-old boy from the Muslim Brotherhood was killed, more than 500 people have been injured, and a dozen of his supporters' offices uh, destroyed or set on fire. And it kind of brings me back to when we had Libertarian candidate for president Gary Johnson on the show, and he said there, there is no moral war, there is no win. To paraphrase, it really does seem like if we get involved with anything, we're screwed if we do and we're screwed if we don't. But that is my American point of view. I know we have a lot of Egyptians, Muslims, and general people from that area that watch the show because we've covered a lot of Middle Eastern stuff over the past, like, four months. So, question to you, what is happening over there? Do you think that Morsi is just going to make himself a dictator? Would the Egyptian people even let that stand at this point, or are they battle-worn? Are they overreacting? Things and stuff, let me know what you think in the comments down below, because it is a very complicated issue. At least from little old me's standpoint. And Asian, of course, it is hump day, and I haven't given you guys any sexy time news today. I've been trying to just focus on the issues. But it is a national holiday, because hump day in the Philip DeFranco world is ass Christmas. And for the lucky boys and girls who waited patiently for their present, uh, one, we have a video of just Senya Vice doing Gangnam Style, which I was like, ah, oh, until I realized that she was in her bra and panties. And of course, hashtag that ass. For the ladies and or gays, we have a gallery of Mr. Matt Bomer. And of course, because today is Ask Christmas, after this video, go to my favorite site on the internet, and that is thechive.com, celebrating hump day the way it should be. With an extensive gallery of, yes, model, but many non-model real girl types. The super main point, you are welcome. Then I have to talk about what many Americans are talking about today, and that is Powerball. If you are not familiar, we have this thing in the States called the Powerball Lottery. Essentially what you do, you pick some numbers between 1 and 59, then you pick a Powerball number, and then you sit at home and you cross your fingers, hoping that you win the jackpot that was last estimated to be $550 million. That number's probably gonna go up with all the sales we're gonna see today. And people could win over half a billion dollars today by picking numbers. Buy a little $2 ticket and your life could be changed forever, except for the fact that every minute 100,000 of these tickets are being sold. I mean, with a jackpot that high, like even a cynical bastard like me is like, maybe I should pick a ticket. But do keep in mind that technically your odds of winning the jackpot
jackpot are 1 in 175 million. To give you kind of a sense of scale, you have a 1 in 5,000 chance of at some point in your life being struck by lightning, or if you're playing cards, you have a 1 in 72,193 chance to get two straight flushes in a row, which by the way, side note, kind of weirds me out that you're 14 times more likely to be struck by lightning than that thing in cards. But I mentioned Powerball today because I always get kind of pissed off, but when you hear these people on the radio, you see them on forums just saying, yeah, you know, if I won the lottery, I'd keep my day job, nothing would really change. And I just can't help but thinking for such wishful dreamers, you have no sense of imagination. Now I will preface everything I am about to say. I have a different belief of what makes someone successful, what makes me happy. My life is different than everyone else's, I understand that, but nothing. I saw so many of these comments and then I saw a guy that was like a painter and he was like, well, if I won, I would I would start my own painting company and I'd grow that and try that out. Growth. I mean, we don't take our money with us. I've, I've had this belief in life and once again, I'm throwing my beliefs onto you. Those who are in a fortunate position but choose to do nothing are not deserving of that position. I mean, I know that if I won over half a billion dollars, which probably after tax is like $336 million, one, give myself $100 million because I gotta eat a roast beef sandwich made by Megan Fox after we have sex in the International Space Station. And two, I'd really want to get into education, figuring out if there's like a way that we can educate people on the cheap after high school. We don't take our money or our things with us. Everyone dies alone. In the grand scheme of things, will we have made a difference? When that day finally comes and it turns out, hey, we didn't all kill each other. Good job. The sun will poach the earth like an egg. All of humanity's advancements and feelings and experiences uh, are gone. Yeah, it may be futile, but I know that what wakes me up in the morning is knowing that at least like one person, I might make a difference. Because while money may be a man-made thing, it moves. Money moves. Hashtag money moves. Why? Because people respect it. Money is power. It's like if Superman decided to stop being Superman, but instead play Halo 4 and get baked at home all day. And uh, your question of the day today is, what would you do if you won and after taxes you had 360 to 400 million dollars? You have the freedom to do anything for yourself, for the ones that you love, for people you don't know. Let me know in the comments or in a video response. And remember to possibly win a 100 dollar Amazon gift card. Leave a comment down below. Join the conversation. Maybe hit the like button. Favorite if you really like it. But of course, as always, my name is Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love your faces and I'll see you tomorrow.